For a long time, Yoga's space-time illusion was one of the weakest characters in the game. And throughout that time, I said, I wish he was good, because he was actually the first character I played and I had a kind of soft spot for him. I can tell you very confidently in Whispering Miss Season, Yoga Space Time Illusion still isn't good. He's fantastic, and so I'm very happy to say that not only have I leveled all the way through the campaign, but I absolutely crushed Time Mark 7, and I set myself up to farm Time Mark 8, all on around 70 Flame Elementium using this character. Though, as a note, prices shift over time, so it may cost you more, or it may cost you less. So whether you're looking to get back into Torchlight Infinite after a break, or you're a brand new character who wants a build that comes on a character you already have unlocked, I can very much recommend Yoga Space Time Illusion. Today, I'm going to go over some of the key choices I made, mistakes to avoid, gear, passive skills, all that fun stuff. If you want to see how my gameplay evolves, and if I stick to this build or re-roll into something else, then do be sure to get subscribed and leave a like while you're down there. But for now, let's get into the details. Starting with number one, three mistakes to avoid. The first is, when you are playing Yoga Space Time Illusion, you have a clone who casts for you. He uses your main skill. So Ring of Ice must always be in the first active skill slot. My personal setup optimizes for the Illusion's damage. The throughput throughout leveling was very much about quality of life, with the clone getting automatically used. This is slightly less DPS, but it feels a lot better and you don't have to hit as many buttons while going through the campaign. Number two, Spell Burst. This duplicates a spell based on your maximum spell bursts. With play safe, your cast speed applies to spell burst recharge, allowing you to cover the map in Ring of Ice for amazing clear. So number one, you do need to scale cast speed. Additionally, you'll want to scale attack speed because that helps you spiral strike faster. And number two, do not put an activation medium in your first skill slot. That's just a bad idea. Personally, I ended up going for a Photophobia because it is more damage, but I would caution you against doing this too early as the lack of AoE can feel a bit bad, or at the very least, if you get one as a drop, try it out, see how it feels, and if you like it, go for it, otherwise give it a pass. You'll need to swap talents from Beacon to Winter if you do this. Then going into this, the last mistake to be aware of and avoid is the build is reliant on Frostbite and Freeze. You have a lot of bonuses against frozen enemies, and minus bosses, frozen enemies can't fight back, which is a massive defensive boost. So never, ever, ever run Elemental Fusion on your Ring of Ice. This will completely lock you out of inflicting frostbite or freezing enemies. So don't do it, it's very, very bad. And as a bonus, if you're feeling squishy or you want even more safety, you can swap elemental amplification out for energy fortress. That's something you will see in some of my footage, but not all of it, as I was going back and forth between the two. Overall, I personally prefer the playstyle of energy fortress, but it is about a 40% DPS loss, so you'll have to pay more attention to your gearing. And so with that, let's start looking at skills, passives, talents, and all that fun stuff. Okay, so here we have the skills. Ring of Ice is in slot one. Remember, this is a very, very, very important so that it counts as your main skill. Then I'm supporting it with Psychic Burst, more damage for skills cast by Spell Burst, Freeze Chance, because you want to freeze enemies and it is a significant bonus, Added Cold, it's simply a big number, Overload, simply a big number, and Crit Strike Rating, simply a big number. The last three are a lot more flexible and or gear dependent. And I have a Soul Candle here, which honestly, it's nothing special. It just happened to be two Flame Elementium on the Trade House, and I thought, hey, 30% more cold damage for two FE, that's a trade I'm willing to make. Next up, I have Force Start here, supported with Defense Layers, Iron Fortification, and Uplifting. However, if you are not going for any Energy Shield, then you'll want to use Compound Source instead, and you're going to want to support it with Limber Stretch, Residues, and Emergency Restoration. This will restore your life and give you a little bit of mana while you're at low levels, whereas Force Start is if you're going more for the Energy Shield route. Ultimately, this does come down to personal preference. For mobility, Spiral Strike is a must-have. I like Harden for a little bit of extra defense, and Quick Mobility is very, very good for getting around quickly. It's almost like it's in the name. Mana Boil is particularly nice because it doesn't actually have a duration, so you can do things like Self-Sacrifice, which lowers the duration, but actually it doesn't because it doesn't have a duration, so you just get the free status effect. Next up on Arcane Circle, I ended up going with Mass Effect Mania Extended Duration. You can use Secret Origin Unleash instead. It does give cast speed. However, the build has a lot of cast speed elsewhere, and I found that with it eating the Focus Blessings and with the fairly long cooldown, it felt very inconsistent. Alternatively, for more penetration, long enemy resistances, you could instead use Elemental Shock since you have a minion to apply it, but again, it felt a lot less consistent than Arcane Circle. 
Now for passive skills, you're going to have a slot open pretty much the entire time. This is because you only have so much mana and I'm not swapping over to low life, reserving life. First up, summon Thunder Spirit. The really important things here are protection field for the defense benefit and mark to mark enemies, which gives you more damage. Since it scales off of the enemy being marked, this does apply to your main skill, even though your main skill isn't applying the mark. And then Elemental Duo, just to give myself a couple extra minions. It doesn't cost very much mana, and I had it to spare, since I'm going with the Energy Fortress setup. If you are not going for Energy Fortress, I would drop Elemental Duo, just because of mana constraints. Next up, we have Energy Fortress, which alternatively could be Eliamp. The main difference is, if you're going with Eliamp, you will have to replace the Selfishness. Selfishness increases the mana for the supported skill, whereas on Eliamp, because it has a higher base reservation, you'll want to use Discipline instead to reduce it. This does lower the aura effect slightly, thus lower your damage slightly. However, ultimately, I felt it was worth it to use my mana to juice up other things and provide defensive slash utility benefits. Now, one really cool thing you can do on this build is you can use Concentrated, which you might be saying, wait a minute. It says that it's aura effect when the character is only affected by one aura. Well, Spirit Magus doesn't count as an aura. Energy Fortress does. So does Frigid Domain. Why am I using it? Is this a mistake? No, this is not a mistake. Because Frigid Domain applies a debuff to enemies. Frigid Domain is not an aura that affects you. So you can then use Concentrated to provide a massive damage bonus. And Selfless, because it says, minus 90% additional aura effect received from the supported skill. All right, so just for transparency, here is my testing methodology for determining that the aura isn't actually affecting me and thus concentrated works. Right now I have 4,359 energy shield. That is with concentrated on both of these. Now, if I replace frigid domain with say, let's go with magical source. My energy shield goes down to 2,915. Almost like I lost a bunch of aura effect. If I put this back to Frigid Domain. Immediately goes back up to 4.3k. If I remove Concentrated here. 29.15 again. So yes, Concentrated is working at least as of the time this video is recorded. Next up, Talents. Most of the time, you will have Beacon here instead of Winter. I have Winter because I have the Amulet. Then, Preparation gives additional cast speed. This is why having Secret Origin Unleashed constantly eat focus blessings isn't necessarily the best. And it also gives you a easy source of focus blessings. Side of that, I'm just going through here. Basically, this is following the progression from the leveling guide on Maxwell, which I'll link down below. You can check it out after this, or you can check out my full character in our builder. I'll definitely export it after I finish recording this video, so you can see a snapshot of my gear as it is right now. After that, for Magister, Bunch, plus Focus Blessing, additional damage, and play safe. This way, the bonuses to cast speed are also applied to Spellburst Charge Speed. And again, just going through the passives here, with a big focus on Focus Blessing stuff and Spellburst. Then we have Arcanist, which has a bunch of cool damage bonuses. You could alternatively use either Warlock or Elementalist. Elementalist offers pure damage scaling. Warlock offers quality of life. Arcanist kind of hits both but it mandates that you build around Freeze, which uh, is fine because frozen enemies don't get to fight back. So you get lots of things like Frostbite Inflicted and Freeze Duration, in addition to damage bonuses and crit, and just a little bit of mana restoration. Yes, this legendary medium talent is a big reason why I'm not running out of mana. Then from a slate of a new god, most of these are things that I dropped myself. Like this, it's not very good. Like this, it's uh, unfortunately rendering behind my head Trust me, though, it's not very good. Like this, uh, okay, no, that's the one that I bought from the trade house. That's the only good one I have. This one, not particularly good. Then again, it does give some relevant bonuses. And that one is awful, but I haven't had the materials to replace it yet. Now for hero gear. I ended up finding this on the floor and it had three slots. So I said, cool. The plus one max spellburst is pretty fun while mapping. Overall, not super impactful though. Aside of that, I just went for things like Space-Time Illusion cast frequency and a little bit of move speed or additional damage for the Space-Time Illusion. 
I want my little clone buddy to do as much damage as possible. Now, throughout most of the leveling experience, I used Flow Disruption instead of Field Effect. Flow Disruption completely automates the illusion and gives it 30% cast frequency. It is slightly more damage to use Field Effect, assuming you're able to stay within the field. So if you want really easy gameplay, just go for this. And on the other hand, if you want a little bit more effort, but a little bit more damage, go for this. Next, you have to take Space Time Resonance. I ended up going with Warp Speed. Overall, this seems to be the much easier to manage bonus because if you're playing around synchronized time, it can get a little bit frustrating. And last up, I went with Twisted Field because the additional damage stacking up feels really good and it's not that hard to stay in the field. Now for pets, uh, what have I been doing? Well, I put on Knight of Pale Blue because I didn't want Traveler's Melees to kill me. But before that, I was just using whatever random pet gave me basic survival stuff like Preserver of Eternity. Uh, Knight of Pale Blue does work for that as well. And then after that, I just put in some basic spell damage stuff and Happy Chunky for additional loot. And then last up, we have gearing. I've tried quite a few things while leveling. I got an Omniscient Prototype, so I used it. While leveling, I used Surging Inspiration Prototype and then ended up replacing it with a real thing later. The Surging was my only real purchase. It cost about 40 Flame Elementium. I did try the Voyager's six piece. While I do quite like having the cheat death, Ultimately, I decided that I could just run an aura, lose some damage, and have a very similar effect while allowing myself more gearing flexibility. The Voyager's four piece is incredibly powerful. You get plus two spell skill level and the additional space time illusion damage, so I would very much recommend using this in your early time mark progression, but not worrying too much about the six piece. Surging Inspiration is a major damage up. I would very much recommend getting it if you can. However, Voyager's commemorative goggles also have some really good stats on them, so if you're using them instead, it's honestly not the worst. For my amulet, I did end up going for a corroded photophobia. I didn't like the minus 10 or 15% area each time it spell bursts, because that did hurt my clear in the early game. In the late game, with so much cast speed, so much spell burst, it's totally fine. So ultimately, I got one of these, and this way I get beacons so I can allocate winter. The only other legendary item I'm using is Arctic Ring. This way, when an enemy is frozen, it dies in that freeze. This provides an absolutely massive, absurd amount of damage. For my only three rare items, uh, number one, this. The Mana Restored on hit feels really, really good. Freeze Duration also feels really good. This was a drop, I believe, that I rolled into. And the other two I bought off the Trade House for a couple Flame Elementium each. Basically, spell skill level and hope I RNG my way into something else. Which here, I got some T4s. It's fine. I should probably re-roll this at some point when I have more Flame Sand. And here, T2. Pretty good. Elemental damage is solid. Fire damage is solid. Probably just going to use this until I can afford a real endgame weapon. Wands are more damage. However, daggers give you Spiral Strike, which is better quality of life. Overall, I think the gearing process is very simple now because you pretty much just set bonus and go. In terms of which slots are good and which slots are bad, ring is whatever. Amulet is pretty good because it has spell burst charge speed. The helmet is very, very good. The chest piece is whatever. Gloves are quite good. Additional damage against frozen enemies. Belt freeze duration, that's quite good. And boots are well-rounded. Not the best, not the worst. So gear based on your luck, your drops, and what other items you're using in these slots. The biggest advantage to playing Yoga Space Time Illusion over most other characters in the game is you have all of the upsides of playing a minion build, with none of the downsides of having to actually deal with minions. Because your clone is you, therefore he scales off of all of your own stats. But in doing so, he provides a massive amount of passive damage. Here's just a quick example of me hitting the dummy, actively casting my skills on the left, and my clone just hitting the dummy by himself on the right. You can see there is a little bit of a difference in the damage. However, overall, it's surprisingly close because a majority of the damage is coming from the clone. This is both because he's very strong and also because I've intentionally built around that to optimize for the clone damage so I have as much passive DPS as possible and I can just focus on dodging enemies. Additionally, because you're a Spellburst build, you have very good coverage with Spellburst automatically targeting things towards the edge of your screen. And because you're a cold damage build, you have a lot of extra safety from freezing enemies. This allowed me to survive when, honestly, I had no right to because I haven't invested significantly into defenses. Going into Time Mark 8, 
I will have to pay more attention to capping my resistances, getting more actual energy shields, such as transitioning into a true low life build, or alternatively getting actual life and armor, maybe even swapping to some defensive skills. But that hasn't been a problem going all the way up through time mark seven. And honestly, extremely chill. You don't have to deal with too many fancy skill swaps or intricate gameplay mechanics as you're going through. It's kind of just uh, watch the clone kill stuff for you and focus on using your movement skill. That's also why I ended up going with Spiral Strike instead of something like Frigid Transmission. On Frigid, you have to make sure you get enough resets and have enough charges, otherwise it does feel awkward. So I ended up progressing all the way to Time Mark 7. I was a little bit worried about my DPS. I spent some time buying things like a Surging Inspiration off the Trade House just to make sure my damage was fine. Ultimately, I was worrying over nothing. I did die once, but that was more to do with the fact that I had full damage auras on because I was worried about damage, no defensive auras, and I stood in the bad things. As long as you don't stand in the bad things, it really isn't a difficult fight. And if you want to know more about how to level the character, you can check out my leveling stream where I went through the campaign, the full written guide over at Maxwell GG, or hop into my Discord where I'll have an export of my character that's also going to be publicly available on the build database. And before I go, a big thanks to XD for sponsoring this video. We've always put a big emphasis on supporting the community to ensure that people have builds to follow if they want to play the game. The Whispering Mist season is currently live. You can check it out right now, maybe play this character and get started, or purchase the Battle Pass, unlock all the other characters, and play the new Erica Lightning Shadow. And so those have been my experiences playing a Ring of Ice Yoga. It's been a blast so far. I've had absolutely no issues with damage. The defenses are definitely a problem of my own making, but it really hasn't restricted me too much since everything's almost always instantly frozen and frozen enemies usually don't get to fight back. Even the tanky rares haven't felt that tanky once I got a little bit of gear. So thanks to everyone who watched to the end. I hope you enjoyed. Big thanks to the patrons and channel members. Good luck on your seasonal journey and I'll see you in the next one. If I end up playing the build more, I'll definitely make an advanced guide going over things like deep space farming.